In this video, we're going to be looking over how to change cat style bucket teeth. Cat style bucket teeth are typically fit to ripper teeth and also buckets from 7 ton and up, roll the way up to your 35 ton and bigger. Now understanding when you need to change your cat style teeth is probably one of the most critical and overlooked parts of being an excavator operator. Once you've worn through these bucket teeth, it does come very costly as you're not only changing the bucket teeth themselves, but you're also going to have to replace the tip adapters as well, which is a very expensive process as these are welded to the bucket and take a lot of work to actually cut them off to replace. So please do, on a regular basis, check that the teeth themselves are not worn, they're not cracked, or they're not missing altogether, which we do often see. If they are missing, please do replace these and do not rely on the tip adapters themselves for digging. So what do I mean by your tooth is worn? So this could be that the tip of the tooth itself is actually worn rounded, which means you're actually getting less efficiency out of the tooth itself. Another critical place to look for wear is actually where the pin goes through the tooth. As once this wears, it can allow the tooth to move further, which then just exaggerates the wear over time while you're using the bucket. So where to actually change your bucket teeth is a pretty critical decision. The best place probably is to actually do it while it's still attached to your excavator. Therefore, you can lift it away from the ground and get really good free access all the way around your bucket. However, if the excavator is in operation and you don't have the ability to use it, Probably the best way is to actually tilt the bucket up on its back, but do make sure that it's stable and it's not going to tip over while you're working on it. So probably the first step of changing the bucket teeth is actually understanding how the pin and retainer style system works, which the cat style tooth uses. So if you look through the bucket here, there's actually a pin that goes through the tooth itself, which holds the tooth on and stops it from coming off. Now the pin itself has this little recess shaped into it, which is where this piece, which is called the retainer, fits in. So if you look on the retainer, there's a slight little notch in there. So as you're hammering the pin through the retainer, the notch expands slightly, which allows it to go on until you get to the recess where it then locks back on. There's no chamfer on the recess, which means it's more difficult to actually drive the pin out of where the retainer locks into the recess. Now we understand how the pin and retainer system works, this can now help us which tooth to start with as the retainer only sits on one half of the tooth. So we don't want to be driving the longer part of the pin all the way through the retainer, we just want to do the bare minimum which will actually then unlock the pin from the retainer. So we can do this by looking into the hole where the pin goes through and you can typically see the little yellow nylon washer that goes around the retainer which just helps it expand and contract. Now with a lot of wear and tear the nylon part can actually wear away and come away. However, you can still look into the end of the bucket and clearly see which is a retainer, as it will be a machined piece of metal, versus which is the tip adapter itself, as you will see a cast piece of metal on the inside of the hole. So we're going to start off by removing the outside tooth first, and then we'll go on to the middle teeth in a minute. So for this, we're going to need a punch, roughly the diameter of the pin itself. Then obviously we're going to need a hammer to drive the punch through. So We've now determined that the retainer is on this side of the bucket. So we're good, just going to use the punch on the end of the pin itself and actually hammer it until the pin comes through the retainer itself. Now this tooth should just slide off and there you can see the retainer onto the tip adapter with the recess there. So now we're going to do one of the middle teeth itself. With this bucket, the teeth are quite wide apart. So I could actually just use a smaller punch again and hammer from here. However, you don't always have that luxury with some of the smaller buckets with more teeth. For this purpose, I would strongly recommend actually removing the outside teeth and working your way into the middle. Now it might seem like a lot more work to actually remove the teeth one by one and work your way in. However, trust me, your knuckles will thank you later for not having to try and get into this small gap. So for this, what we're going to use is a longer piece of bar. We can then just slide in through the hole before it, line it up, and then drive from the outside of the bucket with plenty more room. Then we could just slot the tooth off as before. So now we've got all the teeth removed from this bucket. This gives us a perfect opportunity to actually inspect the adapters themselves. Make sure there's no cracks, make sure there's no excessive wear, 
to make sure there's nothing that's going to make these dangerous or might cause the teeth to fall off while you're digging. So if you do find any wear or damage to the adapters, which means that you're going to have to replace these adapters, this is the point where you're going to have to weigh up between spending the time cutting these adapters off and repairing the bucket or whether it's justifiable to actually just buy a new bucket with a 100% lifetime. So now for replacing the teeth, you actually want to do it in the same order as you actually remove them. This way you can ensure that you're driving the shorter end of the pin back through into the retainer, not spending all the time driving the full length of the pin in. So to start off with, you want to put the retainer into the recess of the tip adapter, then just slide your tooth over the top, making sure that the serrated part is going to be on the top of the bucket. Then we just take the pin, making sure the recess is going to end up at the same end as the retainer, and then put it in through the opposite side to where you've just put the retainer. Just push it in as far as you can by hand. Then we're going to use the hammer on the long bar as before. Slide it through all the other tip adapters and hammer it in. It's hard to describe, but you'll feel a pop from the pin as it locks into that retainer. That way you know the pin and retainer is locked on and the tooth is not going anywhere. Now we just repeat the process for the rest of the teeth. So there you have it, that's how to take off and replace your cap tips. Want to see how to take off just the middle tooth without taking off either outside teeth? Watch this video here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Rhinox YouTube channel. Now where to do it is pretty critical. Pretty critical. <laughs> Exponentially growth, Zeke. <laughs> How's that worm?